Uh, this morning we're here to uh, celebrate uh, the winning coach and, of course, uh, the MVP, uh, the Pete Rozelle Trophy uh, for Nick Foles. What an extraordinary performance of a young man who, uh, who fought through so much and uh, led his team to a Super Bowl championship. Uh, I just was telling Nick, uh, you're the first to throw three touchdowns and catch one. So that's a, that's a pretty good uh, combination. So, Nick, come on up and get your MVP trophy. Nick, John Crick, Toronto Sun. I don't think it's a backhanded compliment to say there's a lot of people surprised with your level of play the last four weeks, but are you surprised at your level of play? And if so, at what point? No, it's, it's not a backhanded uh, statement at all. Um, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, it goes back to everyone wants to point out one individual, and I'm fortunate to be the MVP of this game, but as you've seen this year, we've had so many MVPs throughout the course of this team, different guys stepping up. And, you know, it's just a great honor to be up here to accept this. But on half of the Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, we, I'm, I'm fortunate to be a part of a great team, great players, great coaching staff. And I think, you know, just the play the last several weeks was just a, a team thing. We just kept working, um, kept game playing. You know, I kept talking to Doug about what I liked. And he, you know, him and all the coaching staff kept building it around what we were doing. And then it just, it's a reflection on, you know, the execution on the field and playing for one another, just like we have been all year. And, uh, you know, so in that, it wasn't necessarily me. It was everyone around me that did an amazing job. And, you know, the outcome was, you know, we were successful and now we're world champions. Josh Katzen, Seen Times <clears throat> Union. Uh, Nick, uh, Michelle Tafoya said before the game that Drew Brees texted you. I'm just wondering what was his message and how helpful has he been, you know, for you in your football career? Yeah, I mean, Drew's someone that, you know, we both went to Westlake High School in Austin, Texas. We're 10 years apart, so he's a guy I always looked up to and still do. Um, he just does it the right way. Um, obviously, he's one of the greatest of all time, but, you know, a lot of the message I'll keep to myself, but the big thing was going to this game. Um, he just reminded me that it's just football. You know, it's going to be – I mean, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of things going on. You know, there's pregame, longer pregame, a big halftime show. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're out there, the game will settle down and it'll just be football. And he was right. You know, we were able to, you know, you don't really know. I've never played on a Super Bowl. Uh, it's the biggest stage there is in this game. It's something you dream about as a kid. So when you're out there, you don't know how your body's going to react. You don't know how your mind's going to react. But, um, you know, was able to settle down really quickly. And uh, we were able to get the ball moving. Nick, Kristen Rogers, Fox 29 in Philly. You've talked so much about relying on the support of your wife and your daughter. What was that moment like seeing them immediately after the confetti fell? God, these questions always get me emotional. Um, that's what it's about. Um, this journey, uh, you know, getting to see my wife and my daughter. My daughter won't know anything that's going on. She's seven and a half months old, but just to look in her eyes, the whole world slowed down. And just seeing her look at the confetti, um, to look in my wife's eyes and embrace her and just know that I get to spend the rest of my life with her and, you know, she's been there. But then, you know, all around us, my teammates, my coaches, their loved ones, you know, that's what it's about. It's about that moment where you can just enjoy it, the love, the joy, everything you do to one another, the support. I mean, I can't say enough. And I know that, you know, Doug's the same way. That's what it's about. Nick, right here, I'm sorry. Clarence Hill, the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Sam Ellinger, another Westlake quarterback, tweeted a video of you running that same Super Bowl trick play in high school at Westlake. Can you talk about that? Do you remember that running a similar play like that in high school and your experience doing that? Uh, I was actually Sam running that. Um, I, know, I know the clip you're talking about. Um, Sam, you know, University of Texas quarterback, tremendous player. I'm excited for his future. But, uh, you know, I, I did see that clip and uh, it is very similar to what we did, ironically. Um, and he scored on it as well. He made a great catch. But, uh, yeah, I guess it's a Westlake quarterback thing, so that's really cool. 
uh, Nick, Jeff. Oh, McClain. hey, what's up, yeah, man? Yeah, how you doing? Um, what did you do last night? Can you walk us through what, what you did after well, the after, oh, after left? the game? Uh, yeah, played in a game. Yeah, no, no. What you did after the uh, the bus departed from the stadium? After the bus departed, um, we had a celebration party. I went to for a little bit, but my family wasn't there. Everyone's pretty tired. My daughter had to go to sleep, so uh, shortly after that, I wanted to go see them. I and mean, when I had 20 plus people here, and I was able to get back to our hotel and just sort of spend the time with them, just reflecting, hanging out, eating. Um, and then, you know, that's really it. It's simple. Uh, you can't, not much. Uh, you know, I'm running on fumes right now, but a lot of adrenaline, a lot of excitement. Um, we have a lot to be thankful for. So uh, really just staying in the moment, enjoying the moment. Hey, Ruben. What's up? Uh, Ruben Frank, NBC Sports Philly. What would you like, you've had a unique journey here. What would you like people to kind of take from your, your, your journey the last few years and, and kind of um, be inspired by? I think the big thing is don't be afraid to fail. I think, you know, in our society today, you know, Instagram, Twitter, it's a highlight reel. Um, you know, it's all the good things. And then when you look at it, you know, you think like, wow, when you have a rough day, your life's not as good as that. Like, you know, you're failing. And I don't think, you know, failure is a part of life. That's a part of building character and growing. Like without failure, who would you be? I wouldn't be up here if I hadn't fallen thousands of times, made mistakes. Uh, you know, we all, we all are human. We all have weaknesses. And I think throughout this, just being able to share that and be transparent. I know when I listen to people speak and they share their weaknesses, I'm listening because I can resonate. So I'm not perfect, I'm not Superman. We might be in the NFL and we might have just won the Super Bowl, but hey, we still have daily struggles. I still have daily struggles. So, um, but that's where my faith comes in. That's where my family comes in. And you know, I think when you look at a struggle in your life, just know that you know, that's just an opportunity for your character to grow. And that's really just been the message, it's simple. Like if you, something's going on in your life and you're struggling, embrace it because you're growing. Nick. Jamie Pody, 6ABC Philly. Uh, we were lucky enough to be on the field when you shared a really emotional moment with your dad when you embraced him for the first time. And I just wanted to know what was going through your head during that moment. Um, yeah. You know, my dad's always been one of my heroes. Um, him and my mom. But just to, you know, embrace him. You know, he didn't have an easy life growing up. And for him to, him and my mom to give me an opportunity to play this game, to provide for us as kids, to watch him just through adversity throughout his entire life overcome it. You know, he didn't even graduate high school. And, you know, he's been very successful in his career path. And I got to watch it. I got to watch him as a, a young kid come home at, I don't know, midnight, smelling like a kitchen, because he was working in the kitchen, you know, trying to get, his, I mean, the restaurant business isn't easy trying to get it up, you know, he lost everything. And just to watch him as a kid just continue to give me an opportunity to play and never really realize it till I got older how much he worked, how much him and my mom sacrificed for me and my two younger sisters. So to share that embrace, all those emotions, you know, that's something you just you cherish forever and so happy that, you know, I know his emotions are crazy because he lives or dies every play I play. Probably more than I do. I was pretty relaxed. I know he was probably a little stressed, but um, it was a really special moment. Two more questions. Hey, Nick. Uh, obviously, I think a month ago, a lot of people looked at you and just thought you'd settled into being a backup in the NFL. Have you thought at all about how the last month and a half has changed your life and changed where your career could be going from here? No, I haven't. Um, I'm not really worried about my future right now. You know, I'm grateful to be a part of the Philadelphia Eagles said when I signed with the Eagles, you know, I'm grateful and content in this moment. Um, I'm staying in the moment. I'm not worried about my future right now. There'll be a time and a place to handle all that. But I, I take a lot of pride in wearing the Philadelphia Eagles jersey. And I just enjoy being here. It's such a great team. I'm excited for Carson Wentz coming back healthy. I get to work with him every day due to stud. And, uh, you know, I'm just living in the moment, I'm not thinking ahead. Last question right here. Now. Uh, Chris Thomas from St. Paul Pioneer Press. Can you just talk about how valuable your quarterback's coach, John DeFilippo, was um, just in getting you ready late in the season after Wentz went down and then during the bye week, you know, before the playoffs and just throughout the process? 
Yeah, Coach Flip, I mean, does a great job. Our whole entire coaching staff, I mean, they work together. You know, Coach Peterson, Coach Wright, Coach Flip. You know, we have such an amazing staff of ex, you know, ton of ex-quarterbacks that have been there, played the game. But, you know, Coach Flip, you know, he, he works, he's a grinder. He, you know, barely sleeps, just, you know, fundamentals, giving us the game plan, giving us all our checks, extremely detailed. Um, you know, I'm grateful for him. You know, he's done an amazing job this year. Um, it's not easy when your, your franchise quarterback goes down and, you know, but, you know, the, the great thing about our team and our coaching staff is they work so well together and, you know, they do it all together. I mean, we sit there, we talk, great communication. So um, we're very fortunate players to have such a great coaching staff. Thank you, Jack. Thank you all. Appreciate it.